my name is Mike Nickel. I'm an Applications Engineer with Index Traub. I'm standing here beside the G200.2 mill turn machine by Index. I'm going to go over a few of the features that this machine has and then we have a test part we're going to run through and I'll explain the operations as they go. Um, on this particular test part we've broken up some of the operations to give you a better emphasis on what's going on. Uh, typically when we engineer a turnkey solution for customer we strive for three tools in the cut. Uh, as much as possible. That way we can give you the most efficient po process possible. Um, so now I'm going to explain some of the features of the machine. Uh, this particular machine uh, we have three tool turrets and a milling spindle uh, built into this turret. Uh, each one of the turrets has 14 tool locations with a VDI tool interface. <coughs> the, main, or the milling spindle has an HSK tool interface the milling spindle has the capability of six different tools. Each one of the turrets has the capability of 14 tools. Um, all the tooling positions on the turrets are capable of being driven up to 7200 RPMs. Uh, the milling spindle is also capable of 7200 RPMs. The main and counter spindle are identical um, spindles. They're capable of up to 6000 RPM. Uh, this machine is capable of running up to 65 millimeter bar stock. It also features a gantry arm. Uh, the gantry arm would come in and grab a finished part out of the counter spindle, pull it out and deposit it on the conveyor belt to carry it outside the machine. Uh, when you get down to the end of your bar, the uh, gantry can also come in and grab your remnant out of the main spindle and pull that remnant and deposit it on the conveyor as well. so that. Uh, while that's happening, the bar feeder can go ahead and load another bar and keep your process right on rolling. Um, in this particular uh, setup, we have <coughs> some radio live tools, some axial live tools, some static tools, um, any one that you can see on any typical setup depending on your part and your geometry. Um, we're going to go through and uh, start up the trace program and I'll explain the operations as they're going on and uh, touch on some more key features of the machine. Uh, we start out on channel one. We come in and do a face pass, uh, get your bar shot cleaned up and size. And then we'll do some uh, pinch roughing and turning, some finish turning, some threading, some pinch milling. Um, on the counter spindle, uh, we're doing some work to create a four millimeter hex and then finish turning on it. Right now on our main uh, spindle, the channel one and channel two are synced up uh, doing a pinch turning operation. Uh, what this does is allows you to cut, cut that uh, roughing time in half because uh, channel 1 and 2 are both roughing at different diameters at the same time, but they're synced up. Um, this uh, machine gives you the ability to do that because when you sync up the axes, uh, the tools have about 30 thou uh, distance of between each other, so they're not running into the stock. Um, <clears throat> on channel 1, uh, it has a full 360 degree articulation on the B axis. So you can take uh, that turret and put it anywhere you need as far as your geometry requirements. Right now, it's taken some and uh, taken the axial live tool at 20 degree into the part. Um, it can do this with any of the tools on the turret or the milling spindle, and it can do it on, on the main spindle or the counter spindle. Uh, something else neat about this machine is all three channels are capable of working on the main or the counter spindle. Uh, right now we've got a three millimeter drill that's 30D. Uh, we're sending that deep into the part and we're using channel three because of the length of the tool so that we can index it around and that's why we brought it over to work on the main spindle. And then here you see some more synced up action in the axes. We've synced up the 10 millimeter end mills for the flats. So they're cutting that time right in half. Um, another cool feature of this machine is the high pressure coolant system. It's capable of up to 80 bars or 1160 PSI. Uh, this machine has incredible rapid traverse rates, um, 50 meters per minute or uh, 1900 inches a minute in Z. Um, these machines are incredibly robust. 
uh, rigid and accurate. And all the tool data uh, for your geometry is stored in a unique file. Um, that way when you go to do another setup or you tear the machine down and you, if you don't pull out your perishable tooling from your tool holders, you leave it how it was and you pull the tools out. Uh, with the W serrations, it allows you to put those tools back in exactly where they was with incredible repeatability. So with all the geometry data and the offsets saved in a unique file in the program, uh, when you reload the program and reset up the tools, uh, you are literally ready to go and run those parts exactly how they were running the last time. Um, saves a, a great deal of time on setups and efficiency. Um, <clears throat> this machine also has a Siemens base control uh, specifically designed for index. Uh, utilizes a touchscreen monitor and some hard keys. Um, very user friendly. Uh, from right here you can do all your typical uh, operations as far as you know manual control of the machine or operating your program. Um, right here would be our program screen and if you notice at the top your messages uh, come up here it's telling you to open the door because we ran it through a cycle so we go ahead and open the door up and you'll notice the message goes away. To do any manual functions on the machine um, we have a safety protocol built in so if you go here, it allows you to put the machine in jog mode, and then you select uh, turret one, two, or three, or the subspindle, or the gantry. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to select turret one. We're in jog mode. Uh, with the door open, it will not allow you to move any, um, any function of the machine without using the confirmation key. When you turn the confirmation key on, uh, the keys, the axes that will be available to you will light up and so this is to have both hands on the control to make sure that you don't have any hands in as an operator for safety. So without the confirmation key turned, uh, no axes will move with the door open. Now with the door closed you can jog everything around like you would normally. Uh, this is another safety feature built into our index machines. Um, and once the door is closed, it automatically locks until you use the guard key to unlock the door. Um, some more features of this machine would be that you can go into, you know, your normal screen here, and then you have, you know, program influencing. Um, on this page, you could adjust the percentage of the rapid uh, traverse rate. So if you're doing a setup and you want to single block through, check it out, make sure everything's all right. Uh, you can manipulate the feed rates and then you have uh, another feature of the index machines is you have multiple block skip levels so if you want to do a family of parts and turn on or off features you can program it that way so you could essentially use the same program and run uh, different parts within the same part family and it's easy as checking or unchecking some of these boxes uh, this is totally user set uh, as far as the programming goes from the operate unit screen, uh, you can manually operate any of the functions of the machine. Uh, here we have the tool carrier <coughs> uh, file open, so this would be your turret one, two, and three. Um, we can manipulate the gantry, turn the spindles on, anything like that from right here. Uh, your process control screen shows you uh, what program that you have in, uh, your programs loaded and your previous cycle time. MDI, uh, you can set it up and do any of your manual data input stuff that you may need to do for setup or testing. Uh, single process, uh, kind of the same thing. You put it in your own code and then just run it through once uh, for testing sake. And then we can go back over to our menu select and this gives us another uh, soft key menu. And from here we can look at our parameters um, these parameters would include uh, your tool geometry page uh, that I'd spoken on earlier. This is all saved to your program file so that when you reset this job up, you have all the geometry from the tools in there. So as long as you don't break down the tools, um, all that information is right there in the program with it, as well as the offsets. And it's all saved to a unique file within that program. And then from here, you also go to your 
other uh, parameters of the machine, anything to do with your work offsets, uh, tool change positions, uh, speed limitations, anything like that. It's all controlled from right here. And this is where you would also load uh, your tool data file, which would be your one underscore three. <clears throat> And then it's um, really easy to get back to where you was. You just go back to machine, go to display selection, your program's right there. Uh, this is different displays on your program screen. So if there was something that you wanted to look at in particular. <clears throat> and again, I'm Mike Nickel, an applications engineer with Index, and I look forward to engineering a turnkey solution for you. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to our sales team. Thank you, Michael, for your presentation at the machine. Um, what I, my name is Ed Weinberg. Uh, I am a regional manager here at Index. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is just kinda go through and hit some of the highlights of the G200 machine, uh, things that we really need to focus on. Uh, the G200.2 is a, the newest version of the G200. Uh, three turrets, as you saw, three Y-axis. One of the things that I hit home hard on this machine is the ergonomics uh, and the accessibility to the work area. Uh, this being a vertical built machine, uh, the accessibility is phenomenal when it comes to changing tools and turrets. There's no standing on a chip conveyor. Uh, it's everything is right, easily accessed for the operator and or the setup people. Uh, also with regards to this design also is optimum chip flow. Uh, with this, there's very few places for chips to go ahead and collect, as you would find on a typical slant bed type uh, mill turn. So, phenomenal chip flow, minimizing operator interruption. Of course, inter operator intervention on, the, on a cycle uh, does nothing but slow down production. The machine is designed with great loading and unloading capabilities. Uh, the footprint is small. Uh, for the floor space that is required for this, but it's also a very large working envelope. Uh, you have approximately 600, I think it's 660 millimeter uh, between centers, equating to roughly around 25, 26 inches. Um, it gives a lot of flexibility on the machine. This is uh, the ultimate in a turn mill machine for flexibility of what you can do with the machine. I always emphasize very, very strongly on the W serration of our turrets. Considering this machine has three turrets on it, the W serration is extremely important to have a thorough understanding of why we do this and, and really uh, where the benefits come in. Uh, the VDI tooling is extremely fast change, but again, everybody cringes at VDI tool holders because they are not very accurate. So what we do is have the W serration ground into the outer circumference of the turret, as you can see in that center illustration. It's a convex, the tool holders that we build and we do license some others to build. We actually have the ground mating surface on a con convex area. So we have eight mating surfaces for uh, positioning of the tool holder. Not only is it outstanding for the positioning, but also it creates eight mating surfaces for very, very strong and very stable tools. The speed of the machine is very important. Um, rapid traverse rates for X, Y, and Z, acceleration, deceleration uh, from your main and counter spindles, all of these equate to cycle time. And this is really important when it comes to profitability on the machine. It doesn't matter if you're making 10 pieces or 10 million pieces. Your cycle time is essential to the profitability of the machine. With indexes extremely high rapid traverse rates and extremely fast acceleration decelerations of the different axis and the spindles allow you to have that non-machine non-machining time cut down to a minimum the versatility of the machine three turrets a milling spindle large workpiece capacity the ability to have three and four potential of four tools in cut simultaneously all of these equate to profitability. Uh, you have 42 tools on the turrets plus an additional six tools in the tool changer. So you have a total of 48 tools you can have into this machine. Um, 
quick changeover, very, very strong, extremely accurate. But the fact that we can have the versatility of multiple tools in cut uh, really, really improves your profitability on your parts. I want to thank you for your time. Uh, it's now open for questions. If anybody has any questions that they'd like to ask Michael or myself, we'd be more than happy to go ahead and answer uh, what you need.